We're talking to UE football coach Fran Angeline prior to his season opener against Sweet Home of Buffalo. And Fran, in preparation for this team, a uh, perennial state powerhouse, Sweet Home of Buffalo, maybe you could enlighten some of our listeners just uh, what do you know about this team and uh, what do you expect from them? Well, Doug, we've, we've observed them on film. Uh, we, we've exchanged three films each over the past two years and uh, have analyzed them thoroughly and on the basis of what we have seen, they are an extremely quick team. They, they are very well coached. As you already mentioned, they have been a state power. They're not entirely new to this neck of the woods in that they have played Ithaca a couple times in the early 70s. Uh, unfortunately for them and for everyone else, they caught Ithaca during a streak of, well, I don't know, there were a couple of years straight there when nobody touched Ithaca with the Steve Webster gang and Timmy Moresco in that outfit and the Snickenburgers and uh, Sweet Home. I do remember vaguely some very close scores, however. I remember a 20 to 13 game maybe, uh, Ithaca over Sweet Home, a 13 7, something like that. So, what do we expect from Sweet Home? A very fast backfield. Uh, wide open, wide open offense uh, on the basis of what we've seen on the films that they gave us. Uh, rugged, quick hitting defense, very mobile, some real size we expect. Uh, we've just received their roster and of course that's confirmed by some, some real good size there. And we really don't know anything specifically about this year's team. Sometimes when you've played somebody before or know the personality well, you can you can kind of have a feel for these things. Um, I only know uh, the coach, Joe Shifflett, through my former backfield coach, Bob Adams, who's now at Auburn. Uh, he and Bob were teammates at the University of Buffalo. And he certainly, uh, Joe Shifflett, does an outstanding job uh, at Buffalo Sweet Home and is very well respected around the state. And I just think it's going to be a whale of a football game. And I think it's great that the people in the Triple Cities community have the opportunity to see a game of this type. You mentioned, Fran, about the uh, speed in the back backfield for a sweet home, which you expect. Certainly the UE backfield should, uh, take a, shouldn't take a back seat to anybody this year. In fact, the whole offense in terms of speed. I'd kind of like you to comment a little bit on the UE offense, what we can expect uh, from uh, the offense this year? Well, I think, I think we'll be more of a wide-open offense. Doug, uh, as you mentioned, our speed, we're probably the fastest we've ever been as a group. And uh, any one of our backs is capable of a big play. And uh, Bucci, whether he's in the back end or as a wide receiver, is another one capable of a big play, certainly. So, to answer your question, we, we are definitely going to be a lot more wide open this year, and hopefully some of our people up front can continue gelling the way they have been, and they, they've shown great promise this preseason for opening some holes, and we have some people who can take advantage when they do open the holes. Turning things over to the defense for just a moment, Fran, UE has always been uh, known for the tough linebackers and outstanding linemen. And this year, how do you size up the UE defense? Are they going to be comparable in speed and in depth to that offense? Well, frankly, our biggest concern, uh, because of who is returning, what our biggest concern was at linebacker. And we've been striving very hard to come up with the right combination you know a lot of people don't realize it's we're still talking combination same as offense trying to find the right 11 people who can gel together because uh, unknown to the casual fan defense is really offense in terms of a team concept we're not talking about an individual here and an individual there but uh, we certainly don't expect to have any come down from what we're known for, what we have been known for in past years, and uh, we have 
some size, as I said, and we have some experience, and uh, we wouldn't we wouldn't trade any of these people for anybody. And we think we're we think we can cause some problems, and we better cause some problems because uh, we'll have to shut Buffalo off early. And uh, I I think I think one big thing is they're capable of the long the big hit, and that's the type of thing we're going to have to be careful of. This is what I understand of this team coming in. An interesting side note to this season, Fran, is the absence of Dick Hover, who has been uh, one of your coaching partners for a great many years here at the uh, UE system. Dick has moved on to an administrative post, and it must seem a little strange for you to be out there all the preseason and uh, as you get ready to get underway the 1979 season to have Dick up in the stands watching the ball game. Well, it sure is, Doug. Uh, Dick not only has been with us here for almost my entire 19-year uh, tenure prior to this year, but we are boyhood chums from way back, so we, we go back quite a ways here in Endicott. And uh, yes, we've missed him. We, we certainly missed Dick's fellowship. Uh, his position has been taken by a very capable Tony Romeo, who has taken over his exact title of defensive coordinator, is doing a great job with our people as each party learns what to expect from the other. But uh, I have nothing for except praise for the great job that Dick Hover has done for us. And he isn't, enti he isn't completely removed in that he is our uh, chairman of athletics. That's his official title, our director of athletics. And uh, he's just doing a great job in that capacity as he would do in any, in any job. And so uh, we do see quite a bit of each other. And uh, he, he's going to do a great job there. And we're, we're happy that he's going to be fairly close to the football situation or athletic situation here at UE. Fran, as always, we want to thank you for taking time out and talking with us uh, prior to this evening's ball game, and we wish you the very best of luck not only in this ball game but uh, throughout the entire season. Thank you, Doug. It will be my pleasure. We're talking to UE football coach Fran Angeline prior to this afternoon's ball game against Norwich here in Norwich. And Fran, last weekend a fantastic game against Sweet Home of Buffalo, and Eddie Coban was shaken up in that game. What type of situation does this present to the offense with uh, younger brother Bob in there with uh, the inexperience? Well, it's really nothing any, any different from any club would, would uh, experience with going with a quarterback who hasn't had that much experience, but actually, uh, we <clears throat> we operate, I guess everyone operates a little different way, Doug, and, and we just feel that as of right now, uh, Bobby is a fully grown, experienced quarterback. He went in under the fire, he went in against a fine football team, and uh, played more than a half, and did a great job, and uh, gained confidence out there, and really, it, it wouldn't change our offensive thinking whatsoever. Um, that's that's really about it. I guess after one game we can call Bobby Coban a veteran then of this UE football team. This weekend the UE Tigers play the Norwich Purple Tornadoes, Fran, and they ride pretty much on the arm of Tim Whitney. We noticed in the game against Sweet Home that the UE Tigers uh, defense, while quick in pursuit and uh, very fast, certainly is going to be tested this weekend on that pass rush and pass defense against the likes of Tim Whitney of Norwich. Uh, that's an excellent observation, Doug, because it so happens that we felt having viewed our films of last week, and uh, we, we felt the same way after the game, but you never know, the naked eye and, and viewing the films are two different things sometimes. We felt that our two, our two biggest glaring weaknesses were pass blocking by our offense up front and uh, the pass rush that you just named up front. And against someone like Whitney, uh, who's known for his throwing and does a, does a fine job of it, uh, we're just going to have to have an all-out force up front or, or we're going to have a prayer in the back end. Uh, many people feel different ways about pass defense, but 
one thing is for sure, it doesn't matter who you have defending in the back end, you have to have the pass rush. You, you have to keep him off balance. You have to take away what he wants to do. And he's a big, strong boy and, and a fine athlete, and uh, we're, we're, we've been working diligently on that all week. Fran, one last question before the ball game. Uh, this will open up uh, the UE season against stack opponents, and uh, you just might like to mention what it means to uh, this UE football team as they open up against a team like Norwich and will now be in pursuit of uh, what we hope will be a divisional title and also a uh, high ranking in the uh, states. Well, we're very excited about playing a league foe and uh, Norwich, of course, is in the league, to the best of our knowledge. Last we checked, and they keep changing that thing every year, but uh, this is a league game, and we're, it's like a whole new season to us after this past weekend and opening up our league season, and we're, we're really looking forward to it. Brandon, I want to thank you for talking to us prior to this uh, Saturday afternoon game against Norwich. We wish you the best of luck, and we'll talk to you next week. Thank you, Doug. Always good seeing you. Okay, that was our interview with Fran Angeline prior to this afternoon's ball game. The uh, captain for, for this afternoon's ball game, the old football captain, Eric Tedley, along with Tim Marsh out on the field. We talked to UE football coach Fran Angeline prior to this evening's ball game, and here's what Coach Angeline had to say. This evening's ball game against the Central Bulldogs. And Fran, prior to the season, a lot of people knew for sure you had the potent offense coming back, but I think a lot of people may have underestimated this defensive team. And after two ball games, they're unscored upon. And we'd like you to comment a little bit about this defense their attitude as they go into the third ball game. Well, it's a pleasure for me to talk about this defense, Doug. Uh, first of all, from last year, from a, a real solid defense a year ago, uh, returning, we have Army George, Steve Volante, and Larry Angeline up front. Uh, linebackers, we have Scott DePoffey returning. And then in the back end, of course, we've had Gene Bucci and Jim Newfrock. So there I've named, uh, let's see, six, I think. A real solid nucleus of six guys. So our main concern has been linebackers. They've come along very nicely. As you mentioned, uh, they have two shutouts under their belt. I'm sure they're going to be very hungry for a third. It's a, it'll be a, a very formidable task tonight with Central's uh, speed and size and the throwing ability of young Mac. Uh, and he has some very talented receivers also. So it's going to be a formidable task, but I'm sure they're gunning for their third straight shutout. And incidentally, uh, we, have to, we have to include in these comments that uh, particularly in the Buffalo game, our bench played a whole quarter and uh, against Norwich, I would say about a half. We did play, uh, we do play lots of people, and uh, everyone played in the Buffalo game, and uh, almost everyone played in the Norwich game. So this shutout can also be shared by our bench, because they've, they've done a heck of a job, too. Fran, turning things over to the offense for a moment, the offensive line may be something that you may have been working on this week. They looked a little, shall we say, tentative uh, in the first half against Norwich, but opened up that second half real, real well. And we'd like you to comment on your offense, in particular maybe the line, and also about the, the improvement of Bobby Coban from week to week. He certainly got the starting nod, and although the inexperience certainly showed in the first half, he got the job done for these UE Tigers in the second half and the possibilities of maybe seeing Eddie Coban back into the lineup uh, tonight against Central. Well, there's a, we, as far as Eddie goes, to answer the last question first, it's kind of a day-to-day a -day thing and almost a minute-to-minute -minute thing, and that's the way it's been the last couple weeks. Uh, we think Eddie is going to be ready for some action tonight. We, we don't really know how much. 
as far as brother Bobby goes, he's just been doing a fantastic job as a young sophomore quarterback to be to be thrown in there, and I, I might add to be thrown to the wolves uh, more or less in the last ball game to be starting a ball game as a young sophomore, uh, brother of someone of Eddie's uh, ability and stature, and uh, he sure came under a, a lot of criticism from the from the people who know nothing about the game at all, but that's that's beside the point. Uh, Bobby's going to be a great kid. He's he's gaining experience, very valuable experience. And uh, you hit it right on the nose. The line did seem uh, somewhat tentative in the first half against Norwich. And actually, I must give praise to Norwich. They uh, they had a lot to do with that too. They played a, a whale of a ball game. And why shouldn't they? They're in the league. And uh, this is a big game for them, as this is going to be a big ball game for us tonight. It was more mental than physical uh, as far as being tentative in the first half, and we did tee off the ball a little better, in the, uh, a lot better in the second half. And what we found after looking at the films is uh, it wasn't quite as bad as we initially had thought. There were little individual breakdowns more than as a unit. So these things can be corrected and... Uh, we're, we certainly hope so tonight because this will be, this will definitely be our biggest game to date, and uh, and it's a natural rivalry, and we're we're looking forward to getting that line to, to tee off as a seven-man machine again. Dan, I'm glad you brought up this uh, long-time rivalry that the UE Tigers have with the Central Bulldogs. Central comes in to this game tonight with a, a young but experienced squad and certainly a squad that is really hungry uh, for a victory. And I think there'd probably be a, a victory would be an understatement tonight, uh, their joy, particularly seeing that their head coach is former UE standout Randy Zur. So I'd like you to comment a little bit about this longtime rivalry that Central has with the UE Tigers. Well, for one thing, it's still the game to some old-timers here in Endicott. Uh, for another thing... If you'll forgive a personal reference, I played in all those Turkey Day games, uh, most of them in the snow, as I recall, and uh, it was always a big game then, and it's still a big game now. Uh, to the Bingaman people, I'm sure it's the same way, and of course everyone is gunning for us, and, and that's good. Uh, that's a, a, a nice position to be in, and... Their record does not speak at all of their uh, their ability and their size and speed. Uh, this is this is not a an 0 and 2 central team coming in here. They they uh, could just as easily be a 2 and 0 club. Frankly, we thought they played JC even, and uh, I don't say that with tongue in cheek. They, they got hit with two long bombs. They got burned very early in the ball game, and they never let up. And any team that never lets up in the fourth quarter and is down by 22 points, or whatever it was at the time, has a lot going for it. And uh, this could be a real, uh, real barn burner tonight. Fran, we want to thank you uh, for taking time out before this evening's ball game and talking with us, and uh, we wish you the very best of luck. Thank you very much, Doug. I'm sure it'll be a good one. Talk to UE football coach Fran Angeline prior to this evening's ball game, and here's what he had to say. We're talking to UE football coach Fran Angeline prior to this evening's contest against North here at North. And Fran, again, a long standing rivalry this week as the UE Tigers travel to North and take on the North High Indians. Would you like to comment a little bit again on, for the second week in a row, about a long standing rivalry? I sure would. This is uh, this is what this great game of ours is all about, Doug. At least I've always felt this way. It's about the Binghamton Norris and the UEs, uh, the long-standing rivalries. We've had some some real uh, head knockers over the years, and I would like to say that we've had some very very close, I would say extremely close relationships between the two coaching staffs of Binghamton North and Union Endicott. Uh, I say that for several reasons, but one, 
I have to just touch upon the stack picture briefly. Uh, North High is one of the few schools who's gone on record in saying that they will play anybody in this league anytime, and they do. And they are one of the few, and you have to admire them for that, respect them for that, and why shouldn't they? They're in the league, and uh, they play real tough football, and it's going to be a great ball game tonight. So we have two teams, Fran, that uh, come into this game that not only respect each other on the field, but respect each other off the field also. And looking at the UE offense, which certainly has got untracked, uh, and that's an understatement at this point, they'll be taking on a north defense that uh, along the front is big, and they are quick. And just what will be the game plan tonight for this UE offense? Well, without... Without jumping the gun, uh, I'm sure you're going to talk a little bit about the North offense later, Doug, but uh, overall, we're extremely impressed with being at the North and the games we've scouted. Uh, frankly, they may very well have a better team than last year, and last year was called the greatest team in their history. Uh, they're, they're, uh, they have the size, as you mentioned, the quickness, the speed. How do you counteract it? We are just going to, we're going to have to work a lot harder this week and, uh, and pull things together a lot more. And we're going to have to try to keep them off balance. You can't, you can't just keep doing the same thing against, uh, you can't keep executing the same thing against personnel with that kind of size and speed. So we're going to try to keep them off balance with a lot of, a lot of uh, different things and variety and, and by the same token use uh, some of our talents. Taking a look at the UE defense for a moment uh, before tonight's ball game, Fran, uh, they're certainly going to be tested again this week by a gentleman by the name of Mike Conley as he leads a North High offense that is, again, quick, big, strong, powerful, any kind of adjective and superlative you want to use. And the UE defense, as we said, will be tested tonight against uh, Conley and company. What about that? Well, we just think that Mike Connolly is an outstanding quarterback. Uh, his brother Tim, taking nothing away from Tim a year ago, received so much ink and, uh, and was an outstanding passing quarterback. Uh, a lot of other quarterbacks have received a lot of ink this year. Not much has been said about this young man. We, we've really been very impressed with him in terms of his passing ability, his running ability, and his toughness. He is the leader. There's no doubt about that. He's a tough cookie. No doubt about that. And uh, we are going to have to put some pressure on him or he's going to eat us alive because he has all those flyers. They are, here again, they may be even faster than last year. I don't know. Their ends are definitely not as fast as last year's pair. But the back end makes up for it. They're just as fast, not faster. So he has a lot of talented receivers and runners. And uh, that big mobile line up front, uh, they have some, I'll, I'll tell you, we're, we're very impressed. They look, they look like an outstanding team. For all practical purposes, they'd be undefeated tonight. They're, they're undefeated for all practical purposes. They, they lost a heartbreaker uh, last week. Speaking about uh, tough cookies, Fran, Gene Bucci, who was injured in the uh, Norwich game, did not play last week against Central, and I'd like you to comment a little bit about uh, his availability for tonight and if there are going to be any other personnel changes for uh, the UE club this evening. Well, we hope that Bucci will be available for some duty anyway. Uh, we, we don't know at this point how much, and uh, his status at this stage of the game would have to be questionable. He may go one way tonight. Uh, that would probably be defense. We're talking to UE football coach Fran Angeline prior to this evening's contest against Susan E. Wagner from Staten Island. And Fran, it appears that the Tigers are close to reaching near perfection in their execution, not only from the line of scrimmage, but also their kicking game. Would you care to comment about this and involving this week's practice sessions? 
interesting you talk about the kicking game because there is no way we are going to call ourselves a complete football team. Um, or maybe I should say, as, as everyone else in all the ink is saying, a complete fantastic football team until every single aspect of the kicking game is down to perfection. And I can tell you right now that we put a lot of time into it two weeks ago, prior to the North game. Um, as a matter of fact, to specify an area, place kicking, extra points. And I think nine for nine bears that out. Because um, we were very disappointed the week before along those lines. Now, the biggest single flaw we have not been doing a good job on kickoff returns. It's getting better. You can't really argue about a 39. Well, let's see. Our statistics our statistics upheld a 39.7 yard return, which isn't a bad place to start playing offense. But we're still looking for, you talked about the big play. We haven't gotten it yet on the kickoff return. And we have had it over the years at times. And there's just a one little breakdown here and there. It takes 11. And uh, here again, we're still learning. These are still high school kids. And they understand this, but all 11 will have to do their job. And if they do, we'll pop. We'll pop a kickoff one of these days. So that's the thing I... I, I agree with you on the consistency part. Uh, it's just a tremendous improvement over the previous week, and that's the thing we're striving for. And I'm glad you didn't use the term peak because uh, we certainly haven't. We certainly have in no way peaked. And if we have, we're in trouble. We're in big, big trouble because uh, here we are at the mid-season mark, and we have. Uh, we have the tougher part of our schedule. I don't think anyone would deny that ahead of us. But backtracking, I like to be realistic. Buffalo was a real tough opener prior to the season. And after we've played them, I still say they were a real tough opener. And if I had my druthers, we'd always do it that way. Uh, but the second half, I don't think anyone would deny, is a much tougher half than the first half. So uh, we have to perfect all these things, and we'll just keep, just keep working on them. It makes you wonder, Fran, just what this team will be like when they do reach their peak, if they haven't uh, reached it yet at this point, because they're certainly playing some excellent football right now. I'd like you to comment a little bit uh, on the offense and the defense. We were talking about uh, against Norwich. Again, we're going to reflect a little bit against Norwich. The offense uh, kind of self-destructed the first half last week against North. Your defense uh, had to take it to them, took it right to them that first uh, series by North. They had them right on their heels, but then, you know, they just uh, sucked it in and uh, gathered it all together and played great football after that. And and what do you look for uh, your offense defense tonight against this Wagner club? Well, I'm, I'm glad you asked those questions, Doug, because it's something we've given a great deal of thought to. Uh, first of all, you specify two games, and you hit the two on the nose, Norwich and North. Uh, right off the top, I would like to go on record as if I haven't already, as stating that both of these teams are conference teams. These are league teams, and they're tough teams. Uh, maybe we have some believers around now that Norwich has a football team. Uh, we knew that before the game. We knew it during, for sure, and we knew it afterwards. Well, they've come up with two real fine victories since our game. They have a fine, solid football team, a fine program. Binghamton North, in history has always come up with a fine football team. So, first thing I would say is uh, disregarding any advanced publicity by people. I don't know where they get their information, but these were two fine football teams we played. Uh, from our end of it, I think it was a tremendous educational experience for our team to see what it was like not to come from behind, well, to come from behind against North. I, I even forgotten that part. Um, I wasn't thinking of it that way. But to see offensively speaking against Norwich, even though we were missing a couple of people, that isn't meant in the way of an excuse. Uh, missing a couple of people has no bearing. 
you have to execute, you have to fire off, you have to, you have to uh, have poise no matter what adversity goes, how the adversity goes against you. And this we developed at Norwich. It was a slow development over three quarters. Now, against North, as you mentioned, uh, we had it taken to us, not only uh, beating us off the ball and outplaying us completely, but sucking up the clock which is something that a lot of teams would like to do to us. Uh, I hate to he keep hopscotching, but Norwich, Norwich uh, definitely timed up in the huddle that, uh, to, to prevent us from having the ball. One last question, Fran, before tonight's ball game, and that is uh, a couple of comments, if you will, on Susan E. Wagner, a team you played last year here at Ty Cobb Stadium. They're visiting you again tonight, and we'd like you just to say a few words about them. Well, I'd be happy to. We know very. We knew more about them a year ago than we know this uh, this year's Susan E. Wagner team. But I'll back up a year ago to um, to relate what some very highly respected college recruiters said to me when I asked uh, about Susan E. Wagner last year. They are used to recruiting that whole area, the metropolitan area of New York, and they compared Susan E. Wagner and Monsignor Farrell as the two powers, so to speak, on Staten Island, and they compared them very favorably with the best from Westchester County, and to update things there, White Plains would be Westchester County, currently ranked number two in the state, and they ranked them favorably with the best from Long Island, so we're talking those high-ranking state teams of Farmingdale, Burner, East, Islip, and uh, some of those teams, uh, Deer Park, I think, maybe, and, and some of those teams. So they play fine football. Uh, they're not used to getting as many fans as we get here. This is a big change for them. But as far as on the field goes, they are good size. They were last year, and they will be again this year. They have some kids six. I don't think we've ever played against a kid 6'6", six, six, frankly, in my 23 years. There's one kid listed as 6'6", six, six, oh, two something. Uh, they do def they definitely have a couple of 6'4", 6'5", 225, 240, 245, that type of thing. So they have size, and like last year, they're, they're real men. By that I mean they look, they look like college kids, but uh, they ran out of gas, frankly, last year in the second half. Now, if they're going to do that again this year, uh, we'll bury them, frankly, if they run out of gas in the second half. If they're going to play four quarters of football, they could beat us very easily. I think it's I think it's uh, very fortunate for the people of the area, the Triple Cities, and uh, I hope they appreciate the fact that that we can bring in uh, showcases, such if you want to call it that, of the best from Western New York State, uh, namely Buffalo Sweet Home, and one of the best from Eastern New York State and Susan E. Wagner. I think it's great for triple cities. I think it's great for stack football and uh, great for, for football in, in general. Fran, we want to thank you for taking time out prior to this evening's ball game and talking with us. And as always, we wish you the, the very best of luck in tonight's contest. Thank you very much, Doug. Always our pleasure. Talking to UE football coach Fran Angeline prior to this evening's football contest uh, against the Johnson City Wildcats here at Ty Cobb Stadium. And Fran, we watched together the game last weekend at Johnson City as the Wildcats took on North, and their defense played a real gutsy ball game against a uh, powerful North offense. Just what are you going to have to do uh, tonight uh, offensively to uh, score some points against Johnson City? We're going to have to do a whole lot, Doug. We're going to have to play exceptionally well. Uh, we're going to have to play the best ball game of our season so far. And as far as that goes, the uh, this Johnson City team is easily the best team they've had overall since uh, Stack began. Uh, perhaps not the best in the old Southern Tier Conference, but certainly the best since Stack began, talented-wise. And uh, you hit it right on the on the head when you talked about their defense against North. They had their backs against the door more than once and had a very gutty performance and shut North down every time when it really counted, when the chips were down. We were extremely impressed with their quickness. And, you know, they talk about their, uh, 
they talk about their little guys. We're very impressed with their size. Uh, per usual, Johnson City Wildcats are big, tough, mean kids. They're no different from when they were back back in the late 50s when I was there. Uh, they have some big kids, some huge kids, and they have a very talented football team and an excellent defense. Something that just came to my mind, Fran, was uh, in your previous ball game, uh, Tim Marsh and Carl Norris just had outstanding games running the football for you. And uh, that says something about this UE line, which really uh, may be coming into their own now. Well, I think it, I think it says something about two different groups. Uh, you name one of them, Doug, and that's uh, the most easily visible, and that will be the offensive line. Uh, they are meshing together more and more with each week doing a great job opening holes. Uh, what a lot of people forget is that it, uh, it also involves getting the football. And I constantly throw that up as a reminder that as a rule, so far this year, our defense has constantly forced the other team to give us the football either by punt or by coughing it up or by laying out of down. And uh, that gives the Marshes and the Norrises and the Beddows and the Cobans and the uh, Trudies uh, and, and, and Jack uh, Jack, uh, Jack Williams in there and some other guys, but they're the main guys that have been going. That gives them an opportunity to go with the ball. But our offensive line has really been doing a tremendous job, and that's where, that's where it's at. Uh, you're talking about the ball game tonight. That's where it's going to be at. There's going to be tremendous line play by both teams. You're going to see two great lines coming together, and if anybody really loves football, they'll concentrate on the two lines. It's going to be fantastic warfare up there. Well, there's no doubt in my mind, Fran, that this game is going to be one or lost in the trenches tonight, particularly uh, for the probably for the UE defense. This Johnson City offense likes to take it right to you, and they gained close to 300 yards last weekend on the ground. So it's going to be a severe test for the UE defense tonight. It sure is, getting back to the most talented club they had. Uh, they can hit any place, any time. They have all the tools and showed, they demonstrated a great uh, sustained drives against North, more than one, um, and showed that they can equally do the job in the air which obviously Matuzak personally likes to do, and he has some very talented receivers. They like to spread you around the whole field and then run it at you. Uh, Johnson City has always been a fullback-oriented offense, and at times, especially the second half of North, that's really what they did. They went back to their basic stuff, and they ran that fullback uh, very, very well, and we're just gonna we're just gonna have to play super defense and uh, gain tackle defense, and really what it boils down to is team defense. And that's what we're talking about in this whole thing. Offense or defense, you're gonna, we're talking team defense. And we, we can't afford mistakes because uh, they just have too much ammunition. So that's the type of thing we're going to have to do. As far as the passing game goes, we're talking team defense. It isn't all pass coverage. We're going to have to get some kind of force on Matuzak, and we're going to have to give him different looks. Uh, just a little, little sidelight, Doug, that you might be interested in. I'm sure you're not aware of this, and and most fans might not be. Uh, young Matuzak, Brian's dad, his daddy was a tremendous end for me in the late 50s. And he had the great hands, and that would be quite a combination, young Brian, to his daddy. Uh, Bob was much taller and leaner and, a, and an excellent football player. And, of course, his mom, uh, Joyce Skanecki, is related to a lot of our schooners down here. Well, Fran, certainly the game uh, against Johnson City has uh, some special meaning for you. You have some long ties to Johnson City, and this is a long-time rivalry tonight against these Wildcats. And uh, to conclude this pregame interview, how about some uh, comments on uh, what this rivalry means to you as a coach? Well, it means a great deal. I think any time we play a, a long-standing Triple Cities team, uh, this particular year, how many how many times would a couple teams have an opportunity to play each other right in their own backyard? Who have been uh, who have been touted so highly, not only around here but but elsewhere too? And uh, this is 
This is very rare in other parts of the state, but it's, it's kind of commonplace here in Triple Cities. We're kind of next door neighbors. Uh, it's been a long rivalry, even with the old semi pro clubs. You go back to the uh, uh, the Black Knights of Susquehanna, I think it was called here, or Northside Social Club, and the Johnson City Legion used to do battle out here all the time on Sundays and had some great ball games. So, you know, it goes back a long ways, and there, there's a lot of. Uh, there are a lot of relatives involved here, and, and uh, as, as you said, I was up there for three years, and I had uh, I had nothing but praise for the people of Johnson City, and and I, I came back home, and uh, we've always had a great rivalry. Brian, as always, we want to thank you uh, very much for taking time out prior to this evening's contest and uh, talking with us, and uh, we wish you the very best of luck. We know it's going to be a great football game for you tonight. I'm sure it's going to be a great game, and uh, I wish you luck too, Doug, because uh, it's going to be a big one for you guys too. <laughs> and we talked to Fran Angeline prior to this afternoon's ball game, and here's what Fran had to say. We're talking to UE football coach Fran Angeline prior to this afternoon's football contest as they have traveled here to Maine and well to take on the Spartans. And Fran, at this point in the season, it appears that you truly have a team effort uh, on behalf of these UE Tigers. And from a coaching aspect, that really has to be very, very rewarding. Well, it's something we work very hard on, Doug. Uh, something we certainly strive for. And certainly something all coaches strive for. We, we really work on it here. And uh, if I could just... Perhaps I could explain it best this way because they have been improving, uh, we feel, and making great strides with each game overall. I might explain it to you this way. Uh, a record was set the other night, and uh, this was no Piker's record. Uh, a record was set. I was not even aware of it. I honestly can say I was not even aware of it. I would have been later on. But uh, that Eddie Coban broke... Uh, Tommy Mason's all-time Union Handicap passing record. That's in the history of the school. And uh, this, the, the boy Tommy Mason, whose record he broke, went on to start at Iowa State. I just throw that in because he broke the record of a pretty fair country football player. But uh, the point I'm trying to make in this team play is, and uh, we talked about this to our squad, when you talk about an individual record like that, what went into his breaking that record? Well, we have to start with a prep team. The prep team that's out there defensively uh, trying to cut off pass zone, doing what we think the opponents are going to do, and this is going on a couple nights during the week. And they, they take their job very seriously. Uh, I have to talk about the faking and the blocking of the backs. That's what goes into a record like that. The fantastic faking and blocking by our backs. People don't realize that. They see those backs doing so many other things. I have to talk about the decoy receivers. How about the guys who don't catch the football? They're running better and sharper patterns each time out. Um, these same decoy receivers, what about after the guy catches the ball? Well, they're, they're picking people off with some fantastic downfield blocking. That's getting better and greater each time. But I've left the two most important groups of all team-wise till the end. Uh, the offensive line has to give them time to throw, and I've left, left the best to last. And it always comes back to defense, and I'm as stubborn as can be, and no one will ever tell me any differently. We can't establish an offensive record. We can't be a big offensive play team until we get the football. And our defense has gotten us the football time after time after time against outstanding competition. So if this continues, we are going to continue to improve. So this is what we're talking about by team play. You speak of the UE defense, uh, Fran. Just uh, thinking about it for a moment, coming into this game against the main end well, the main end well record uh, certainly does not indicate what type of football team they are. And what kind of challenge will this main end well offense uh, present to your defense this afternoon? Well, I can assure you it will present 
plenty of challenges, Doug, and I, I say it sincerely, you know, it, it's awfully hard to forget a year ago uh, for me personally. I, I'm Frankly, I'm scared to death. I really don't know what to expect. Um, Maine and Well is very much in a similar situation as a year ago, as we are. And they are, the record is anywhere as close to, uh, to their ability and what they have. They've lost some very close games. And I think perhaps their most recent game is the, is the one most indicative of their talent. They lost to a fine uh, Wappinger Falls team who is now 6-0. and uh, Last year, they were just a so-so team they lost to here. But the game was meaningless. This year they went, went up there and from our scouting reports and everything else, <clears throat> played them a very even game. The statistics bear that out. So what do we have to do to stop Main MO? Well, I know their quarterback, the passing quarterback, very well. Uh, Mike, I've worked with him at camp. And it's a couple of summers, Mike has been up at camp uh, up in Sydney and is a tremendous individual. We, we're well aware of his passing ability. And uh, if anything, they are a bigger, faster team than last year. There was no one with the speed of, of a pitcher, like, like pitcher offensively, the Sinclair offensively. Uh, I would say that offensively, they're a much stronger football team than last year because they have more weapons. Uh, they sprang rounds on us last year all of a sudden. They may do that again. I know rounds has played a lot this year, as well as McKelvin. But which one's going to be in there, we don't know. But they're two different types of kids, and it poses problems. You, you, you have to spend the whole week getting ready for both of them. But they do have backs with power, and uh, a lot of power, and Kuzma, and, uh, and uh, some fellows like that. And... They do pose a lot of problems. Let's turn things over to the UE offense for a moment, Fran. The UE offense has been able to take advantage of whatever the other team uh, will give them, whether it be the run up the middle, going outside, throwing the bomb, whatever it may be. And uh, do you anticipate uh, this type of offense is set up for the UE Tigers uh, this weekend against the uh, main end well? I'll be very honest with you, Doug. We are expecting the most wild, fired up, best defense that we have faced this season this afternoon. Uh, a wild group of Spartans going all out, uh, hell bent for leather, gambling, uh, anything goes, type of thing, legally, of course. And uh, we hope we hope to be able to adjust. Uh, we feel we can make adjustments, and we hope to be able to adjust. Of course, we felt we could adjust last year, too, but it took three quarters to do it, and you just can't do that. So uh, we hope to be ready for anything they throw at us, and uh, hope that this, this great team aspect continues for us. Uh, as I say, one little aspect I mentioned, our backs, and everyone's raving about Marsh, Norris, and Beto uh, catching and or running the football. You should see those three guys block. And they are tremendous blockers. And we're going to have to have them this afternoon. We're talking to UE football coach Fran Angeline prior to this evening's contest against the Little Red from Ithaca. If there's any kind of rivalry uh, that is the epitome of rivalries, this has got to be close to it tonight, Fran, as you take on Ithaca and uh, longtime uh, coaching rival Joe Moresco. You're right, Doug. It's a tremendous rivalry. And Joe and I go back, well, probably too long. But uh, we've been at it a long time, and we're very good friends on and off the field. Uh, Joe has been a guest in our home and his family, and uh, of course we follow Timmy's progress very carefully with the Jets. Uh, this, this rivalry tonight is going to be one of the great ones, certainly some stand out more than others, and uh, this will be a tremendous battle tonight to go, uh, to go unscored upon, because the safety this past week doesn't count. 
Uh, that was scored against the offense anyway. To go and score upon for six and three quarters games is really fantastic. And uh, Ithaca should be congratulated. And that's always been Joe's fort, uh, Joe and Ithaca, no matter what they have. They've always had a rock rib solid, huge defense. And uh, this is a pro-sized team coming in here Saturday night, I'll tell you, up front. And it isn't the first pro-sized club we face this year. So we're maybe a little ahead of the game in that respect. But uh, what do we have to do to, to get ready for them? I, I, uh, I have to mention at this time, uh, my, my two offensive assistants, our offensive coordinator, Bart Gusha, and our backfield coach, Russ Nicosia. These, these two guys, you know, kind of hang in the background uh, as assistants sometimes do. Uh, they have done a tremendous job with our club, not only this year, but every year, year in and year out. And, uh, and we'll, we'll get some things going to try to combat this, uh, this great size of Ithaca's. And they have good speed, they have good balance. And the biggest thing... He has those real quick feet, and he is extremely dangerous when he scrambles. And uh, as far as staying on the ground goes, I really, I really think Ithaca is going to try for a balanced game. And uh, when they have thrown, this, this is with Stukes now, they have thrown very well, and uh, they, they've really come on. You know, they put 49 points on the board against the Utica team, and you put 49 points on the board against anybody, there has to be more to it than just running. So uh, I've, we've seen him hit bombs. We've seen him hit a couple bombs. But the biggest thing is, and I'll tell you, it worries you to death as a coach, a defensive coach, is his scrambling ability. He has broken two games wide open by doing just that. Now you fall asleep, you let him, you let him get outside some contain, and he'll just, he just go wild. And he just soon run his throw. And he's a, he's a very gutty. He's a very gutty uh, young man, I'll tell you. He's tough. And, of course, West is a big, strong, fast back. But we have faced a few of those this year, too. Well, Fran, this is the type of football game where you can just feel the excitement and the tension in the air tonight here at Ty Cobb Stadium. And we know it's going to be uh, probably the most severe test thus far for this UE team, not only offensively but defensively. And... We're sure the number one state ranked UE Tigers are going to rise to the occasion tonight, and we wish you the very best of luck. Well, thanks, thanks very much, Doug. We're, we're going to need it, and uh, whatever happens out there tonight, I think the fans are going to have a, a real thrill in one of the great high school games in the state this year, certainly, without a doubt. Talking to UE football coach Fran Angeline prior to this evening's game against their arch rivals, the Vestal Golden Bears, at Vestal's Memorial Stadium. And Fran, as we've progressed through this season, the word pride has come up an awful lot of times in talking to you about this UE football club. I know. And tonight I know. you take on another club that prides itself in pride. So it's pride against pride tonight with UE taking on Vestal. Well, I think it's a great tribute to both communities and both schools that we can have uh, a rivalry as heated and yet as friendly, and I do not say that with tongue-in-cheek, uh, as we have had for, for these number of years, and uh, it's, it's certainly a, a high school spectacle, and uh, it, is a, it is a showcase. And I think uh, I think both clubs are the epitome of pride. Myself, and uh, it, it comes from the communities and it goes right right down the line. And uh, as far as pride being a factor tonight, uh, certainly one club won't have more than the other. 
because uh, both clubs have a lot of pride, a lot of tradition, and uh, both coaching staffs, and both schools, and both communities. Fran, let's talk a little bit now about the Vestal offense and compare it to uh, what they're going to be going against is this tough UE defense. Vestal has really been improving a lot the last couple of games. They were rather inconsistent to begin the year, but Gillard has improved a great deal in running this football club. And, of course, Vestal does have the number one uh, runner in stats anyway in Mike McDonough. And it certainly poses some problems for the UE defense. Well, it certainly does. Uh, as far as Mike McDonough, the name you mentioned last, uh, Mike personally defeated us last year. I, I feel very strongly about that, even though I'm a, a great believer in, in team plays, you all know, and everything else. I I really feel that, that uh, we had the best of football team beaten, or should we say even anyway, even up last year, except for McDonough. He was the difference in that ball game last year. A couple of key passes uh, at both ends, both as passer and receiver, and a couple of key runs in there. So we, we are well aware of Mr. McDonough, and we're before the season. He's an outstanding football player. I've had an opportunity to work with him in camp uh, in the summer up at Golden Valley. He's a, he's a fine individual, uh, certainly an outstanding athlete. But he isn't alone in that best law. You mentioned the fact that they have been improving. That's that's been our exact impression. In fact, they've come leaps and bounds offensively since uh, oh, since midseason or just toward the end of the first half of the season. And uh, Gillard is really coming on as a quarterback and poses all kinds of problems because he has uh, that great. Uh, traditional vestal speed along with the rest of them. That is a very fast backfield. And you know, it it sits back, and except for McDonough, it's unheralded. It's amazing to me. And, uh, and here we go again. It's similar to Ithaca last week, you know. Ithaca comes in here undefeated. Uh, from our end of it, we're playing an undefeated football team tonight. They lost to Rome. That's a little a little uh, edge off their record, but so what? Uh, Rome Free Academy is Rome Free Academy, and UE is UE. And uh, Vestal is undefeated here in, in the conference. Not in division, but in the conference. And uh, we're playing a, another undefeated football team for the second week in a row, and I think it's great. I think it's super. It's just that I don't think anybody else realizes that Vestal, once again, is a very formidable football team. Their offense will pose us many problems. Uh, I think they'll be the fastest backfield and line. And line that we've played. Listen, they have a tackle there getting back to camp. They have a tackle by the name of Pat Goodspeed. He was the fastest kid at camp this past summer, and he was a reserve back a year ago. And he can fly. He's an offensive tackle. So that just shows you what kind of team speed this Vestal team has. That's going to pose a problem to us. I would say overall, line included, they will be the fastest club by a long shot we've played. And backfield-wise, uh, Vestal and Buffalo, our opener, were, were the two fastest uh, clubs we've we will have met. Fran, the UE offense has pretty much uh, had it their way this year in running up points with good field position uh, against almost every opponent. Is there any reason to believe that uh, tonight will be any different uh, against Vestal? Do you think that your offense will be able to do what uh, they want to do out there on the field? Well, we'd certainly like to think so, Doug. Um, of course, you know, it doesn't always work that way. Uh, just this past week, we really felt that against that great Ithaca defense, and it was the best defense we had faced all year, without a doubt, size-wise and every other way, we really felt that we, at least in the first half, that we were not stopped. In fact, that's what we had told our kids at halftime. And I don't mean yelled, I mean told. Uh, we discussed the fact that we had stopped ourselves twice. And uh, you're always capable of that. You're always capable of stopping yourself. But we feel we can do some things on Vestal. We hope we can do some things. Here again, uh, I don't know why some people feel so so sorry for Vestal. Uh, you know, they aren't just big. Defensively, they're huge up front. They are a huge football team. And, uh, of course, Ricky Myers, uh, we've known him for, it seems <laughs> seems like a thousand years. We're happy to see him go this year because he's been a thorn in our sides for a long time. And, uh, you know, Rick obviously is our most experienced kid, but he's not the only defensive football player over there. They 
they have been pretty consistent defensively all year, and uh, and uh, they have been inconsistent in certain games. We hope that tonight is one of those games when they are a little inconsistent. We hope to keep them off balance. We hope to uh, we hope to have a balance attack, and we do definitely want to both run and throw, not one or the other. We we definitely want to do both. Brian, as we get ready for tonight's uh, football game here at Vestal, you've seen the field many times, as uh, have we, in covering Vestal all season long. And the Vestal football field is, shall we say, uh, substandard at this point in the season with all the rain. It's mud from uh, 30 to 30. And uh, and with the weather conditions uh, being what they are th this evening, do you feel that that's going to present any problems to your club? You know, it, it, substandard is very kind. Uh, you know, I have to get back to your original question of this uh, of this chat we've had, Doug. Your original question about pride, and this has nothing to do with the coaching staff of the Vestal football team. Uh, it has to do with somebody. I don't know who, but uh, there isn't a hell of a lot of pride in that football field. I can tell you that. That's a disgrace, and it is unfortunate. But there's nothing we can do about it. Obviously, there's nothing they can do about it. As far as our end of it goes, and I say this sincerely, I think conditions are overplayed. I, I really always felt that way. I think uh, the home field advantage or disadvantage as such is overplayed, at least on our level, high school level. Now, NFL, that's something different. But uh, as far as muddy conditions go, it, it doesn't seem possible to someone sitting far away in the stands, but we played up in Binghamton this year. And I'll tell you, I don't know how much money that was put into that field, and that's not any of my business, but those conditions were terrible, and it wasn't even raining at the time. And I have never been on a sideline in a coaching box in muck like I was up there. I had to walk out of my shoes. It was that type of thing. So will it cause any problems to us? Um, we, uh, I know this is going to sound very boastful, we, we beat a very fine Binghamton North team, 63-14, to 14, on what I consider a very slow track, because it was mud right down the middle. Not much different from uh, this field tonight. So they obviously, have, it hasn't slowed down McDonough at all. And if he can go in it, we, and, and these other guys, you know, you, and here again, people forget, Guys like, uh, we're not forgetting guys like Kavasny, you know, and this uh, new fullback that's taken over halfway through the season uh, has been doing very well, and uh, and these other guys, and the, and, the, and the ends too, but they've been able to move in it, so we feel we can move in it too. Last question for you, Fran, and uh, as we've gone through this season, there's been a lot of questions and comments about the UE football team and about Fran Angeline, and as we go into this last football game with you, undefeated, number one ranked, how's Fran Angeline holding up this week under the pressure? Well, actually, I, I love pressure myself. I, I, I love a pressure game. Uh, we've really been looking for, I can't express to you, uh, the thrill that it is to coach games like these last two games. It's just a, and I don't mean to belittle the previous seven when I say that, but it's been a, it's just a thrill to play Ithaca and it's a thrill to play Vestal because we know we're in for and we know there isn't going to be any baloney and uh, it's going to be a real, a real football game and uh, I'm, I'm holding up fine. I'm, I'm really looking forward to it and uh, our, our season has been a, you know, we've had a fantastic season, and I'll be very frank, um, it would be, uh, I think it would be completely erased if we don't do a job tonight. And uh, we're, we're hoping to come out on the winning side of the ledger. Points mean nothing. We're, we're, we're hoping to come out on the winning, winning side. Fran, we want to thank you for taking time out and talking with us uh, before this game tonight against Vestal, as you have throughout the whole season. Certainly we know we're going to get caught up in the excitement of this football game tonight here at Vestal, and we hope when we talk to you again is to congratulate you for an undefeated season and that number one uh, state ranking, which you and the UE Tigers certainly deserve. Thanks, Fran. Well, Doug, it's been my pleasure talking with you all season, and as you say, you know, that ring is... That ring is definitely within sight, 
and uh, whether the whether the troops whether the troops are going to grasp it or not is entirely up to them. But it, it certainly is there. And good luck to you guys tonight too. Keep your poise, eh? <laughs>